Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and uh, following up on Hour 3 yesterday, Monday the 8th, uh, we had a remarkable interview with Freeman. Website is freemantv.com and of course the other website you want to follow is weirdstuffmagazine.com. I think the title is quite humorous because uh, you have to have a little tongue-in-cheek humor when you deal with this stuff because a lot of people get so overwhelmed just even at the basics of the technology of understanding the symbology and ceremony of our modern world. It is a culture, just like a lab culture, and the culture medium is uh, the media, which is interesting, it's close to the word medium, uh, for television, radio, uh, communications, universities, religions, even the architecture where buildings are placed and the the use of what I call spirit knowledge and spirit uh, science to manipulate and control and literally craft the future predictive programming, all these things that people say, that can't really be happening, we can't be being manipulated. And the worst state of being a slave or being entrapped is to not think you're a slave or entrapped, or that in fact you own these ideas yourself rather than ideas that have been enculturated into you rather than independently deciding on them after observing the facts and analyzing them logically. Our society are often, as I say, a culture of sheep, uh, but uh, I can perceive that you, Freeman, and I, and a number of other leaders, like Alex Jones, many others, are sheepdogs. We don't see, we see the wolves coming, we see the patterns there, and your uh, website, and of course this documentary article that you posted up, which people will be able to see after the show today and yesterday, and your website and your new uh, magazine that's coming out, and you have a, a kickstart. When people want to order this, they can get... Uh, Weird Stuff magazine, and the first edition is coming out. Tell us all about it, and uh, let's continue in filling in some of the points in the dialogue we started yesterday. Oh, thank you, Dr. Bell. Uh, really, the reason we called it Weird Stuff was, was mainly to make it innocuous, so, so that people, you know, when you start throwing and bantering people in the head with truth, they tend to repulse and, 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 and not like your, uh, your attention, right? So we decided to create an right. encyclopedia of the occult and, and popular culture and politics and new technologies that was laid out in somewhat of a tabloid format where you have all the imagery and everything else that's kind of fun to look at. Uh, and this to hopefully grab your friends. We want weird stuff to be a tool for you to share the occult with your friends without freaking them out and giving them the, just an open door to start to receive this data. Because if we don't we don't take steps against this uh, programming, you know, the world's going to go exactly as our masters wish. Right. And tell us what kind of, where's this programming take us? Where is it right now? For example, I just watched this miniseries I referred to in the last show yesterday called Homeland that originated in Israel that's already said predictably, oh, uh, we already attacked Iran, five targets, America did. Rather than Israel, we attacked America, Iran, and now we're worried about uh, terrorism blowback. And they, of course, say in this program with the various actors and actresses that uh, that hit the Bashir reactor and saw the sites and it wasn't completely effective at, quote, stopping the ability to generate high-enriched uranium for a nuclear bomb. I mean, this is really crazy stuff, but they're doing it. And everything, whether it's the singers like Madonna and... Uh, some of the, they're so bizarre, some of the costumes and outfits and ceremonies and some of the millions of dollars to perform them that our media and Hollywood, I call Hollywood, which basically is from, the, it's, it's funny that they call it Hollywood because the holly tree, the wood, which is literally cut into the shape of a magic wand, is called a pindar, which is a, a term that means the penis of the dragon. It literally is a pindar or magic wand. Uh, these are phallic symbols. People don't realize that all around them are symbology of magic and occult science. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope to database all of this on freemantv.com. For seven years, I've been laying it out there, giving you the imagery necessary. I've traveled around the world and photographed almost uh, you know, every, every icon I could find and inside of every secret society we could get into, which, you know, we visited the Jesuits, the Masons, uh, the ARE, the OTO, you name it. Uh, we've been there, the Rosicrucians. And we go inside and we film all of this and we take images and we put that all up on freemantv.com for people to discover for themselves, to see what it's like. I mean, when you go to a Mason temple and they're showing you the altar that has been broken because Theodore Roosevelt's leg brace laid down on it and broke it, 
and this is the same altar that Harry Houdini knelt at, you have to start to question what these men are doing behind these locked doors. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what, 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 So what are they doing? <laughs> Well, it, curiously, it's it's a form of Kabbalism that, that is uh, going back to ancient Hebrew mysticism. And when you find out that Freemasons come into this lodge and they pretend to be a character named Hiram Abiff. Now, I've done many studies to try and figure out who Hiram Abiff is, because this is the man every Mason pretends to be. It is the first master Mason and must be at the core of this story. And the only connection that you can find, and, and very curious ones at that, are going back to Solomon's Temple, and of course this is where every Mason temple, every lodge is, is based on Solomon's Temple. And they, uh, the man, Hiram, was brought by Hiram, King Hiram of Tyre to build a house for the Solomon's Temple to house the Ark of the Covenant. But he didn't know how to, to house this, uh, what, we, what I call high technology. I believe the Ark of the Covenant was, was high technology, and they needed someone. Now, what was really curious, and I'll just throw this out there, is that uh, Zechariah Sitchin, in his 12th Planet and Earth Chronicle series, says that King Hiram of Tyre left the planet, much like Ezekiel or Enoch, and returned with this strange character, Hiram of If. And, and that's where he leads you in the book. He never tells you how he referenced this or anything, but this is showing that perhaps the extraterrestrial connection to Freemasonry. Uh, that they brought back this strange man yeah, so who knew like the ancient, uh, how to house this uh, high technology. Right, so it's like the ancient story about Nankidu and the uh, I, and the idea of uh, the the N key, etc. Right. Well, uh, beyond that, even because we take into account that Solomon was known as one of the greatest magicians of our time or of our world, and he had many grimoires that he had laid out. Now, what I find most curious right now is there's such a thing as Goetia magic, and this is uh, what Aleister Crowley considered a base form of magic. It was calling upon demons or demons, uh, as as the, you know Aleister Crowley put it, right. uh, to to do your bidding. And King Solomon had designed 72 sigils or magical seals to bind these spirits to use them for his own bidding. Now, what I've found is that we have been moved to our new global world, and each of the new global capitals are actually, actually extraterrestrial. I mean that they are launching into space. So we have Astana in Kazakhstan, which has two massive copper pillars that you uh, enter through after you've walked through the Pyramid of Peace. Now, Astana is this new global capital, and it has the, in the Pyramid of Peace, that's where the global, uh, gov or the global religion was form, and that's already where the council meets inside of this pyramid of peace. But if you look at Astana, which is uh, one of the first pre-planned cities in the world, and what I believe will be the global capital, uh, they actually have it designed from the, from the sky. If you look at it from uh, Google Maps, uh, you'll see that it's actually designed as one of these seals that Solomon has in his grimoire to control these demons. Now, it wasn't just Astana, which is, I like to say, astonishing. And Astana means threshold in their language. And that is what you get when you go through those twin columns. But um, Astana, there was one more point there. Uh, of course, they're the ones that are launching to the International Space Station. And then you have Canberra. And this was overshadowed by Henry Kissinger, which actually was reflecting back to his work with Richard Nixon to set up the ten regional governments of America, the UN-controlled regional governors, which Obama has now already established and named. Uh, but the uh, the pre-planned city of Canberra in Australia, and this is where we have, of course, the uh, Pine Gap and Echelon and all of the the global communication network is also set up as a seal of Solomon. Amazing. Even the locations on these special ley lines, etc., have all got occult specific architectural significance.
Welcome back, and uh, lots more to discuss. Uh, this article that you've placed on FreemanTV.com is amazing, and this is the one, the science fiction or space fact faction. Uh, so this article, let's let's continue on this because we want to fill in some of these points, so people will start to kind of grasp the forest and the trees. But what's really going on in the world, even things like the SpaceX project, which is going up, the Dragon, uh, the huge contract with NASA to supply the International Space Station. Uh, everything in our world, including even space exploration or the release of Nobel Prizes in, in stem cell research to everything that happens politically, often happens on specific dates and specific locations because the symbology shows that the global elite, quote, are trying to convince each other and the higher powers that they're in control because they're using occult scientific knowledge, spirit knowledge, hyperdimensional knowledge to control the planet of Earth and the corporate or global consciousness and the timeline of the population of the planet. Yeah, a lot of people don't know how strange their world is and how it's uh, being led. I went to the Nicholas Rorick Museum, and he's the guy who got uh, Henry Wallace to put the pyramid on the dollar bill, and, and we were talking about his building, the master building, which is literally designed to channel these entities into the building. Uh, it's now an apartment complex, so I don't know what it's like for the people living there. Uh, but this man was actually paid by the American government to go around the world, um, most especially Tibet, with a strange little coffin that he said had a piece of Sirius inside of it. And, of course, Sirius being a son, I don't understand. Uh, but this is the tale that goes along. But this man here, Nicholas Rourke, <laughs> busily being paid by the American government to do these type of esoteric rituals with these stones. One other thing I wanted to say is that I have had a 10-13 or October 13th show every year for the last seven years. And without fail, something has occurred on that year. Um, at that time, so I mean, on that month and that day, so ten thirteen has been one that I've tracked for quite some time. It is actually Chris Carter of the X Files production company's name, and it's the date that Friday the thirteenth comes from because it was the day the Knights Templar were burnt at the stake. Now, as I began watching what could happen and where we would go, I, I started watching the Vatican's attempts to take the Temple Mount. And I believe this would be the event that would cause uh, World War III. And I, I, I had speculated on a, a Fourth of July date for such a thing because it would be uh, the day that Sirius is in conjunction with the sun. And this is why we actually have the Fourth of July as a special holiday, not because it's some celebratory uh, Independence Day. Uh, but 1013 falls into the same category, and with the Pope coming forward and uh, exonerating the Knights Templar, which is just astounding, and I can't believe that the world is not talking about this, but the world doesn't know about the Knights Templar and and what what relationship they have to the creation of America and and you know their relationship with the Jesuits who are now running all the astronomy at the Vatican. Uh, but so 1013, I just want to put that one out there, that this is a day that I always watch. 1013, the 13th day of the 10th month. Now, the 13th yeah. day of the 10th month next week is going to be uh, the is Saturday. Now, uh, 1013, wasn't that supposed to be the time of the, of the incineration of one of the Knights Templar? The, t the 13th day of the 10th month that fell at that time on Friday, so they call it Triskaidekaphobia if you're afraid of Friday the 13th. But the 13th day is a specific day memorializing the death of one of their leaders, isn't it? Yes, and this is another way you can see how we are indoctrinated with their belief systems. You know, now we have Friday the 13th with Jason and, and horror movies, and people reflect on this idea, right? Or we even have Captain Morgan going back to the Morgan Affair, which was a 9-11 date. But 10-13 uh, was the day Jacques de Molay was burnt at the stake. He was the, the grand commander of the Knights Templar. And so the Freemasons still today uh, give the, the hail of long-live Jacques de Molay. Um, so this is why Friday the 13th is the most unlucky day, because they killed the Templars on that day, and because you live in a Freemasonic world, you uh, you live with their belief system. Now, the Freemasons, people don't understand what Freemasonry is. Freemasonry is basically uh, the, uh, the ancient ones. They used to call themselves the Druids. And the Druids basically uh, absorbed all the ancient paganism, uh, they became the apostate knights, uh, the apostate 
members of all the Celtic religions, all the the Druidic religions of Northern Europe, they were actually apostate with the uh, sons of Aaron when they were transported by the Assyrians across Northern Europe and Ireland and, and Scotland, etc. So the, this is a Druidic world. The Druids run the planet, don't they? I have, I don't have personal connection to understand the Druid connection with Freemasonry as I track them back. I, I haven't, rip, uh, you know, obviously yeah. Druidism comes up in this whole situation. Yeah, is uh, your, is your, the higher orders, the higher order. The higher orders of, of uh, masonry are all druidic. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're in uh, Buddhist uh, monks in uh, in uh, the Tibet or in China, whatever. Druidism is very, very ancient, uh, and it precedes the the modern terms that we call masonism now in the in the later centuries. But druidism uh, goes back to the ancient world, to to uh, to Atlantis and Mu. It goes back to many thousands of years ago, long before the Ice Ages long before the collapse of civilization and the destruction of mankind and previous cataclysms. And uh, the Druids run the earth. The Druids uh, are basically the masters, and there are many different orders. For example, the highest level of the human being can be in the, in the Masonic orders is the 180th degree. Um, and uh, most people don't think that high. They think only the 33rd degree, which are all different directions of the compass, because they become master architects or master pilots in the sense in the world that can understand the 33 directions to control their fate and their direction that they go in their life but there's far higher orders like the 11 levels of illumination beyond that uh, and that's why they call them the Illuminati because they have to be at least at that level before they actually inducted into the Illuminati and they all understand that they're parts of the Luciferic power uh, don't they? This would explain why the, there is Hollywood surrounding <clears throat> the Georgia Guidestones and also another skill of Solomon that I had found, which is the Nashville Bicentennial Mall, which is also surrounded by Hollywood. So this means there are holly plants growing around these things. Uh, so if you go to the Georgia Guidestones, you'll see it's surrounded by holly plants or Hollywood. And, of course, that is the Druidic magic wand, as you were saying. So the connections are yeah. absolutely there for us to see. And, and, uh, now, and, I had mentioned the Berry is, event is, of William Morgan. Uh, Captain Morgan was the first to come forward and release the, the Masonic rituals in written form and was Masonically murdered. Uh, they, they have, uh, 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 what do you call that? Sorry. Um, Disembowelment to releasing their secrets, yeah, yeah, right? You have to, you yeah. have to give an oath to say that you bind yourself to have your throat cut across and your tongue pulled out by its roots. And this is how they found oh, yeah, Captain yeah, yeah. Morgan, kind of the Italian uh, necktie, as it's known. But this spawned the first ever third party of America, which was the anti-Masonic party. Now. This is the thing. If people want to start stepping on masonry and saying, oh, they're a bunch of Satan worshippers or whatever, you know, you don't really understand the situation. And when you start to realize that this country was founded on Freemasonry, that the title, our name, America, actually is for the goddess, uh, uh, the star Venus, which goes back to Lucifer again. Welcome back, and of course, uh, all of the big blockbuster movies are based on this occult. Even when people start referring in these documentaries to Nostradamus, they aren't aware that he had access to the ancient book of mysteries and the book of the dead that was translated from you know, ancient Babylonian because his wife was very wealthy, they had access, and it was translated in Venetia. So he used a brass bowl with waters and specific vapors, they call it, or special spices of vapors, to get into an altered mental state and open up an astral if you want to call it mental gate, so he could actually see visions of the future, and that's why he wrote his very contorted quatrains, partly to cover himself up so the Catholic Church wouldn't execute him or put him in a tower, uh, and also to kind of act as a, a, a message to all the royals and the rich people who would support him because he was giving them advanced knowledge of what the future held. And uh, so Nostradamus was using occult technology, just like if you were to go to the home of the Rothschilds or these elite bankers and so on, you'd be amazed to see these ceremonies, much like Eyes Wide Shut, where you see people with goats' heads 
on and canes with a golden uh, uh, demonic entity on the top of the cane and they would be saying the black mass and the and the uh, the our father in Latin backwards while they'd be marching around in a specific circle and pounding their canes on the ground making these chants people say oh no they don't do this real people doctors judges attorneys generals don't do these kind of things and I beg your pardon they do they absolutely do. And as you were saying, this advanced knowledge is really what they're after and, and trying to, to pre-plan things. And as we have seen, you know, uh, the movie Knowing showed us the BP oil spill before it ever happened. Now, a curious note about the BP oil spill. Uh, we were checking into some of Anton LaVey's satanic rituals, and he was uh, giving the rituals to call upon Cthulhu. And this is A God of the Abyss, written about in H.P. Lovecraft stories, which actually reflect the Sumerian gods. And he says the best place to, to perform an invocation of Cthulhu is off of an oil rig, and, <laughs> and that you would need to have a massive uh, eruption at, at the base. And, you know, he described it just as if we were looking at this BP um, oil spill. And, of course, this was written, you know, decades before this ever happened. Uh, the the thing is, in in, wow. in in foretelling the future, now you had brought up Nostradamus. He uh, laid out that after Mavis dies, the Antichrist will rise. Now, curiously enough, it was Ray Mavis who Barack Obama put in power, or uh, head of the Navy, who therefore is in charge of the United States Space Force. So we now have a Mavis in the in the mix and uh, the potential for a Nostradamus truth to come out. What I, I think, uh, uh, one of the things that I'm watching now is, is a second sun, if we want to jump to a little new topic here, because it kind of ties yes, in. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, we've been making many references to Lucifer and uh, how this all connects, but the Vatican, of course, has a Lucifer telescope, which... Uh, you know, it stands for Large Binocular Telescope Near Infrared Utility and Camera with Integral Field Unit for Extragalactic Research. Now, these are all the words that they had to fit in there to make the, the telescope named Lucifer. But this Luciferian telescope is out there to see infrared. And what I believe right, which uh, they can is, see. is yeah. well, you know, there's so much symbolism going to the second sun that this is the technology to see that second sun. Now we talked at the other, the, the last show yesterday about Firefox and how Fox equals 666 and Firefox a burning 666. Well, if you look at the right. Firefox logo, it actually looks just like what could be our binary star, which is G1.9, is identical to the Firefox logo and is the potential right. for our binary star and the potential for the coming catastrophe. And, of course, we're seeing all kinds of infrared uh, telescopes going up around all of a sudden. Well, but yeah, we've got the uh, IRAS telescope, we've got Chandra X-ray telescope, we've got the binary telescopes for solar observatory, and, of course, we have uh, uh, the space-based or near-space-based 40 to 60,000 foot uh, on a Boeing 747 launched three years ago by the United States and a German made infrared telescope that can see very well in the upper atmosphere out in the deep space. So uh, they know very well, and I've got tons of sources that know very well that uh, they, I like to refer to it and call it as the, the, the ancient word was the destroyer. Heraclitus, or uh, some people call it Nibiru, but it's not a planet. There are planetoid objects like Sedna, which is about five times more massive than Jupiter out in deep space in the Oort cloud. But we're talking about other objects. As, uh, we're going to talk about this tomorrow with Professor McCanny about the fact there's many objects out there that are dangerous, rogue planets uh, through, that swing through the galaxy, uh, rogue stars, uh, stars that are in long period orbits, uh, the one that Dr. Muller proposes is somewhere around uh, coming back uh, every so many 24, 25 million years. What we see is extinction level events and major earth changes that occur along with an object that returns in a periodicity of every 3,600 plus years, which fits in perfectly with the volcanism and earthquakes that destroyed the Minoans and the people uh, in Egypt were downwind of the uh, volcanic explosions that destroyed uh, Thera. So what, what I think that the, the, the globalists know, and that's why they're building underground cities at a feverish pitch, that's why they want a control matrix in place, even though very soon if we have a CME, it'll knock out the control matrix of satellites and ground-based communications, because they're in a panic. 
to, to quote, have continuity of government and civilization with selecting out those that they want in their underground cities, <clears throat> both the elite and people for a genetic seed stock. And that's why they have the, uh, the Svalbard Island in 600 miles inside the Arctic Circle, 600 feet above sea level, uh, seed, seed vault for the whole planet. This is not by chance, and it's not Dr. Deagle's theory or uh, Freeman's theory. It's just facts. You need to connect the dots to one and one, and you say, oh, my gosh, that's a very convincing four. Not one and one equals two, because it all starts to make sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It starts to tie all together, and, and that's when this really becomes uh, an interesting field of study. Uh, yeah, well, well, well not just field of study, it's a field of survival. If our population, you know, we mentioned this, and I've had, uh, so if you go to revelationnews.com, and I did, one of our gentlemen, Mr. Egward, put a, a video clip up there defending what we do. And since what we're doing is, is prophetic warnings to the people, we're telling them, this is the technology that's being used to control you. This is the fact we're not preparing for galactic and solar and weather changes. We're not preparing for wars that they're literally trying to promulgate. They're not trying to, to, to take, put water on this war in the Middle East. They want to inflame it. They want to make things uh, cost more. They want to cut off oil. They don't want to deal with the drum Corsi's truth that we talked about about an, an hour one on Monday about abiotic oil that the Nazi Germans discovered 70 years ago. No, no, no. They want a subjugated population that's starving with no energy that believes a lie of carbon-based fuels and how it's killing the planet and that we humans just have to go away and the planet will survive. These lies are right out of the pit of hell. Yeah, and, and, you know, I went to the the Mayan ritual where they performed the first ever all-night ritual at the Pyramids of Tikal. And we talked to the Mayans about these doomsday prophecies, asking them for perhaps solutions or methods that we might be able to employ. And they, uh, they live in a realm of synchronicity. Their lives are based on this synchronistic path, and each thing opens for them. They told me guidance would come. But they said that if people could take it into their hearts to have the gratitude and to show the ceremony uh, to the world, to the, the, the Gaia, Gaia, if you will, you know, the, the world uh, spirit, then we could lessen the effects of these things. And I really do believe that the human soul has the power, if we were to unify as one heart, to actually lessen the effects of all of this. Well, it comes down to a spiritual principle that I try to teach in the program in various ways and metaphors, that the great religions are divided between what they call the I and the we. There's a large number of religions that believe that I, I, in other words, I can be saved. I personally can reach some kind of salvation, whether it's Buddhist or Catholic or whatever level, even Masonic. And then we have the we, which are believed in multiple life uh, reincarnations. And the fact is they missed the truth about what Jesus would taught and what the Old Testament tried to teach and the reality that we are both an I and a we and we, if we come together and are truly empathic, we wouldn't do what we're doing right now. Welcome back, and um, definitely have to get you back on uh, the program in a few weeks, uh, Freeman. Uh, people need to understand that someone like Obama or even Hillary Clinton, these people are products of trauma-based mind control. Can you get into this a bit? Because there's interesting situations where places like the uh, Montauk Project, uh, the people that came out of Montauk were tied directly, by the way, to Disney Corporation. Disney Corporation, many of these so-called singers like Britney Spears were actually products of, of, mind, uh, of trauma-based mind control and uh, that these individuals were creating what's called personally alters that size directly to uh, spy techniques they used in the CIA and these special agencies like the No Such Agency or NSA which has a budget many times larger than the CIA the next largest agency on earth so program, uh, uh, the programming techniques of trauma-based mind control give some examples and some scenarios well, you know, you got me thinking of Chuck Barris of the Gong Show who came out with Confessions of a Dangerous Mind where he outlines very much that he was a killer, contract killer for the CIA and made a book about it, made a movie about it. So there it is in your face. Uh, I did do a full documentary on uh, Britney's meltdown along with Anna Nicole's death, and it's called Anna Nicole, Britney, and Mind Control. I highly recommend you get into this because this is a much deeper topic than we can cover here. 
right now we have Corey Feldman coming forward, and this is this is amazing. Uh, the poor child has been abused, uh, uh, raped since he was you know five years old. Uh, this, uh, and he's now coming forward. He says that his his partner Corey Haim, uh, partner and friend, I should say, not like <laughs> anyway, uh, Corey Haim died uh, due to the suffering of this pedophilia. He says that they are surrounded in Hollywood by this, and of course we know this. Now, one of the things that we have talked about is the idea that you have to give your free will agreement to all of this. And, of course, when you walk into Freemasonry, that's the first thing you say. You say, I come with my own free will and accord. And this is what they need from us. And this is why they put these program children in front of us, so that we accept their uh, situation and we, we go along with it. Uh, a movie that will show you what trauma-based mind control is, step by step, is called The Butterfly Effect. And it's curious because... Uh, Alistair Crowley's book on the moon child, which is all about in, embedding a god form or an extra-dimensional entity into a child, is named the butterfly uh, net. And we've got a bit of a connection with the butterfly effect. But it shows even in this movie how when they're split in their personalities like this, how they go trans-dimensional. Uh, Ashton Kusher in this film happens to time travel during his, his uh, event. And, I, and this is getting so close to reality, and they're using it actually as a storyline for us to just have as entertainment. But having Corey Feldman come forward is a huge step for many others that want to come forward and start to talk about how they were uh, trauma-based mind control victims and how satanic ritual abuse really surrounds all of Hollywood and is Hollywood. All of our first Hollywood characters that come to us are Satanists, like uh, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, or even Elvis. When you start to get into his storyline, you're, uh, man, that's crazy stuff. Uh, Michael Jackson, of course, was another one that was put through some serious trauma, and what we, uh, well, you know, this led to him, you know, wanting to transmit his soul into a robot, and I think he's actually time traveled at this point. I have some science behind all of this to to try and look into that. But trauma-based mind control is something that they are now making just very popular. It's, it's become like a popular culture thing. Steven Spielberg put out the United States of Tara that uh, hero, it heroizes the, the uh, split altars that these people go through. But the curious note is that this whole monarch program is named Monarch because the, uh, the monarch butterfly takes three generations to get from its birthing place to its mating place. And the question to the Nazis was, well, how was it that they can know where to go if they're dead? <laughs> you know, how does the second generation carry on? And, and this came to the understanding of genetic memory. And uh, an example of genetic memory is placing an owl up on a building top so that the birds won't land there. Now, the bird may have never been attacked by an owl, but its genetic memory knows that that is a predator. And uh, this is the, the key factor to this trauma-based mind control is tapping in to this soul line and being able to reference into the other dimensions or the soul spirit uh, areas. Yeah, in, in other words, uh, there's a technology there. Uh, it's interesting even some of the new uh, movies that come out. Uh, what do you think of the movie that's come out called Paranorman? Have you, see, have you seen that? I have, have not been able to see that one yet. But I'll tell you what, uh, that Corey Feldman, curiously enough, the Corey Feldman interview about him uh, in the pedophilia ring uh, was produced by ABC, which, of course, is Walt Disney. So this has me just going batty trying to figure out why they want it promote their own, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, nefarious nature like that. I think it's, it's because the mask is coming off. I, I have a really feeling that society is deteriorating to the point we have basically a high-level Masonic, Sunni Muslim, uh, apologist at the very least, uh, red diaper baby communist in the White House. And then his alternate is the alter ego is a high-level uh, Mormon Former bishop, high level uh, representative of of day of, uh, of the uh, Rothschild Empire, basically in in uh, Mitt Romney. Uh, so we have basically two different you know, we want to call timelines. If we get Obama, we have eco communism. We have a godless society that will basically outlaw free speech and have uh, a destroyed economy that will make everybody an underclass. Uh, 
under, and of course it'll apologize eventually, we'll have mass migration of Sunni Muslims and Sharia law in America. Now, if we have Obama, if we have Romney, we're likely to have a preemptive strike on uh, Syria and Iran. We're likely to have a militaristic state. Both of these, by the way, will eventually result in them printing so many dollars, eventually the American Fed Reserve will become the World Reserve, and they'll convert it to a biometric world currency called the Mark of the Beast. So either pathway, whether it's eco-communism under Obama or a form of militaristic fascism, uh, austerity fascism under Romney, we're converging at a satanic outcome, which is ultimately an underclass of people who don't really have any private property except electronic divots in the supercomputer with a biometric opening code is your ability to open up your own account, and they can press Alt-Delete, and you cease to exist. This is a world where everything is smoke and mirrors, where literally people in the, in the distant future, according to the evil plans, could literally be loaded up into a rack and just enter into cyberspace and suspended animation, and that may be their their outcome. Maybe the Instead of prison sentences, they'll be put them in cybernetic prison. Who knows? I mean, you have to use your imagination, but the future, if we have either one of these alternatives, is dark indeed, because we're being pushed to the edge now of what I call normal, free human civilization. We are sentient beings created in the image of the Creator God that literally have control of not only knowing what we know, but even what questions we can ask. And they don't want these questions asked. That's why Obama is trying to get a kill switch for the Internet. That's why we have to be very suspicious when the alliances between Mitt Romney and the Mormon Church are stronger than those to the American people, even though he comes out with policies and he's probably a better economic manager. Uh, of the two, I think Romney is probably better than Obama, but they're both going to lead us down the pathway towards a satanic outcome, aren't they? I just can't believe that anyone can believe these are the two best men for the job. That's that's where I get lost right from the beginning. Two, uh, two, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, two, side, two satanic sides of the same coin. Look, uh, you know, here we have George Soros controlling Obama. I call Obama Nokio. And then we have the uh, the Illuminati bankers, Bain Capital, and Mossad, etc., and they can totally control Romney. And there's a direct link between the Rothschilds and the Mormon Church. I mean, what could be more obvious? So we have a situation here where one of the first things that has to happen is people have to wake up. They have to realize that we if you want to call it the messengers of truth, <clears throat> it's a very rude truth. It's a, it's an embarrassing truth. It's, it's a kind of an angering truth, but it's a truth that <clears throat> our whole culture, our nation was not founded on Christian principles. Our nation was founded on Masonic principles. Yes, it was a small night, it's just like in the state of Israel, of Messianic believers and Torah Jews. And with that mustard seed, uh, the nation, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, was held back from destruction. But America, the land of the dragon, that's what the term America means, it was the dragon nation that's in the Voynich document from Francis Bacon 500 years ago, the illegitimate son of Queen Elizabeth I. People don't understand that they used occult technologies to found a world that they would eventually craft into their new world order, the Novus Order Seclorum, which they're ready to culminate. Aren't they? Absolutely. Amazing. Dr. Beagle, and uh, we'll just have to do another show. We have to, freemantv.com, and you want to get the, jump and get this uh, magazine, weirdstuffmagazine.com, get your order in now, and regularly check freemantv.com as soon as you get back home, we need to get you back on the air regularly, Freeman, because people hear lots of interesting things in the program, including wellness and anti-aging and politics, etc., but the ultimate thing that rules our civilization is occult technology and the dark side, and people don't even think it exists. And that's the most disturbing thing. They think that we're just talking foolishness, and it's just the way it is. Thank you, Freeman. Back tomorrow with Harley Schlanger on the first hour. 